Apologies, I haven't heard talk my talks, so I'm going to have to read it. <coughs> Uh, so when I first arrived at Maynooth almost five years ago, I was uh, relatively naive about the workings of a university research office. Um, since then, I've gotten a little bit <laughs> none the wiser, um, but what little manage I've managed to pick up, I'd like to impart to you today. Um, so let's start with the usual. <laughs> <laughs> variations for our institutional name and they've all been used so to make things easier please just use the National University of Ireland <laughs> no comma for your publications and if you're planning on submitting a proposal please contact us at least two weeks in advance. The other big thing I'd like to bring to your attention is the plan to change our name. We're like the EU, we can't leave names alone. Um, so our office will soon become the research development office. So what does that mean and more specifically what does that mean for you? Um, so the most important thing um, that you need to know about research development is that we can get involved a lot earlier in your work. We can help you better present your ideas, we can help you find, um, help you find out what your colleagues are working on, and we can also try to get you working together more. Um, and we can also help you write better research proposals. So if you have good answers to these questions, what is the problem you're trying to solve? Why is this important? Is this new? Why you? Why now? Who next? Um, then you'll have reviewers eating out of the palm of your hand and you won't need people like me. Um, so uh, we want to help break down these silos that can form very easily in academic research. And there's nothing wrong with silos. Some of the best research is and always will be um, done by individuals. But more and more funding agencies are encouraging or forcing researchers <laughs> to work together on interdisciplinary projects. Some examples include PRTLI, FP7 Cooperation, and SFI CSET. So if you want to go down this route, we can help. We can help you connect with colleagues and other disciplines and institutions working in related areas. One of the things is, for example, Ignite today. There's also speed networking, which is based on the speed dating model. Um, <laughs> this activity is best for introducing different groups of researchers um, that might share common interests but normally wouldn't interact with each other. Um, another more intense activity is something called sand pits. Um, so researchers who are interested in a specific topic from um, gather together from a variety of disciplines. We lock them in a room and they brainstorm and develop ideas into proposals. Then um, everyone votes on their favorite proposal and the winners get a little bit of seed funding. We're dying to try this out. Okay, and a huge reason then, of course, for people to work together is EU funding. Um, it's, at the moment, it's the only substantial pot of money out there, especially, and it's getting more competitive as national funding goes down the toilet. Um, I'm gonna tell you more about FP8, or Horizon 2020, as it's now called, in the next 75 seconds. Okay, so Horizon 2020 funding is divided into these three areas, excellent science, competitive industries, and better society. Um, some programs from FP7 have been retained, but there are some new schemes that you should know about. So for excellent science, we still have the ERC and Marie Curie, now including her Polish maiden name, because Poland currently has the EU presidency. Um, as well, uh, there's the infrastructures program and the future and emerging technologies program, which currently is being held within the ICT theme. For competitive industries that focuses on materials, ICT, nanotechnology, biotechnology, manufacturing, and space, and as well, um, they want to leverage more private financing and venture capital, and there'll be more support for uh, small and medium enterprises. And for better society or societal challenges, this is replacing cooperation, and it's taking, once again, the bulk of the budget. It consists of a number of cross-disciplinary challenges that are supposed to address basic and applied research, as well as society, hence the name, Currently, there are six themes. There are health, food, security, and energy, and also inclusive, innovative, and secure societies, climate action, and transport. And there's not a lot in there for the humanities, so now is the time to make your concerns heard, as um, Horizon 2020 still has to be ratified by the parliament, so there's still time. Um, so I want to get local again, and I have to say one of the best decisions I made when I was starting at Renewth was to commute my train from Dublin. Um, I've met so many people, and, um, and, have had, and having 40 minutes of uninterrupted time each way has really allowed me to learn a lot more about what um, <laughs> <laughs> and to make friends and gossip, and it helps that every train journey is just like this. <laughs> uh, and it's only gotten better since Philip Nolan has started commuting. <laughs> so, but unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end, and in September, uh, my husband was offered a job at the University of Bristol. And Bristol, as you might know, is home to Massive Attack and Banksy and that really scary teen show um, Skins, which terrifies parents of young children like me. Um, and then I was extremely fortunate to also get a job at the University of Bath, which at Bath is known for Jane Austen, Roman Baths, and Georgian architecture. Um, we don't know where we're going to live yet. Are we going to live in the 21st century or 250 years ago? Um, we're still trying to decide. Um, so I think at this point, I'm going to end here. And I'm going to say <laughs> so long, farewell, I'll be just saying adieu. Um, thanks so much to all of you for everything. Um, I'm going to really miss being in my Thanks. Thank you.